Once again, good morning. My name is Ilya Daronov. I am managing director of RBC TV channel, and uh, I will be helping our esteemed speakers to answer the questions during the session, and I will also be assisting during the discussion. Let me introduce those who are on the stage now. Alexei Nasarov is the vice president director of the Department for Non-Banking Services Development of Promsvaz Bank. Applause. Vladimir Trojanovsky, deputy director general of Денис Баранов, генеральный директор Positive Technologies. Максим Григорьев, генеральный директор Ассоциации Финтех. Павел Гонтарев, управляющий директор ВКТех. И Евгений Колбин, генеральный директор Облачной технологии. Круглый стол у нас называется «Доверие к новым технологиям». Я про приложение Финополис не просто так сказал, вот как раз пример. Доверяем мы или не доверяем, и теперь я еще раз попрошу поднять руки, у кого есть приложение и у кого есть ID. О, ура! У нас почти с вами набрался кворум, и тогда я предлагаю проделать следующий путь для тех, кто находится в зале. Зайти в приложение, выбрать дальше э, нашу сессию, и там будет голосование. Пароль для голосования очень сложный. 4, 3, 2, 1. Эти цифры нужно набрать, как мне сказали. Там вы увидите голосовалку. А у нас с вами вопрос такой, доверяете ли вы новым технологиям в мире финансов? Yes, but do not use. No, I am not sure about the safety and no for other reasons. And now I would like our panel speakers to answer this question verbally. Everybody has a mic, so you're welcome to go ahead and uh, go ahead with your answers. The question whether I trust the technologies. Uh, yes, I fully trust them. Uh, uh, no, I'm, uh, yes, uh, but not ready to use, etc. Uh, yes, uh, I am actively using and they have been tested by my teammates. In the field of uh, safety, uh, yes, I trust uh, and I'm using them myself and we are all for the development of those technologies, yes, completely, yes, completely. Yes, completely as well. Uh, colleagues, good morning. It is very difficult to say during this session that no, I do not uh, trust, but our company is called NSPK, which is an acronym for National Payment Systems Company. Yes, I trust them and I'm using them everywhere. And um, this uh, common uh, wisdom is that uh, we'll trust something until we have run, and run into some difficulties. So let's see if there are any voting outcomes on the screen. Okay, 66, po almost 0.7% fully да, trust and apply. Uh, yes, but not prepared to use themselves less than 60%. Uh, almost 28% are not sure about their safety and 0% no for other reasons. So we have very trusting, very confident room and our speakers, they also all trust our technologies and that is also an indicator that the people who came here know something about the technology but now what about uh, the common people, lay people, uh, common people who come to banks? So I would like to ask the first question to Mr. Alexei Nazarov. How do the people who come to banks uh, uh, treat? Uh, what is their attitude to the new technologies? I, I think... Uh, now, speaking about the banking sector as a whole, which is quite sensitive uh, for the people, it's our money, the money of the user, and uh, 
uh, in spite of that, it's one of the most advanced sectors from the point of view of digitalization in Russia. Over the last five to seven years, throughout different, uh, uh, and one, it's one of the top sectors from the point of view of financial technologies and the implementation of digital technologies. Yet uh, we are quite regularly uh, having those uh, inputs, uh, different uh, tests of academic uh, uh, nature, like people are being asked whether they want to transfer their personal data or use biometry. Last year, for example, High School of Economics has uh, uh, done similar study, but most people maintain that the benefit from using digital technologies uh, overweighs by far their uh, harm. And so, in spite of all the events that are happening, people want uh, to have uh, prompt and high quality delivery of banking services while the banks for quite some time are in this uh, arms race and they want to give the client prompt solutions, they want to give the uh, uh, client an opportunity to prompt the credit the funds um, to the accounts, etc., transfer the funds. Uh, of course, at the same time, the preservation of the personal data is quite important. And that's the main precaution. Of course, uh, there is a social engineering when a certain uh, thing is uh, uh, taking place, things are taking place, and there have been certain leaks of data lately, and they are quite uh, painfully affecting when the first um, uh, the leads, the CEOs of the banks had to apologize. But if we're talking about the corporate business, then in that field, uh, the people are more open. And for any uh, large-scale corporate business, there are their own uh, safety, security system. Uh, there is a certain um, inertia. People are slow at implementing things. and. Uh, Etc. and it's a little bit slower than in the retail sector or in small business. So the new technologies, it's always, uh, you always have to share your data or it's uh, more like years than like now because any technology implies the usage of certain services and you have to identify to whom you are providing that service. And this identification, uh, of course, it's the first item of uh, when you are entering this new service and it means that you are supposed to receive it, otherwise you're not going to obtain it in a personalized uh, manner. Think, uh, Maxim from FinTech, how do you evaluate the development of our technologies now? And can we be talking about a certain uh, backsliding after um, February 24? Uh, I would like to continue what the previous speaker has began to uh, deliberate upon, uh, and that's uh, the fact that the development of uh, the technology in the financial market, it was, it was quite high in terms of its level and the achievements, which is supported by many international surveys and ratings. Uh, and uh, many survey companies in the uh, technology field uh, in finance, uh, there are quite powerful companies in finance which uh, turned into technology companies and quite strong technology companies that uh, have created quite uh, powerful um, potent financial uh, services uh, in the market and yesterday the plenary session 
it has been uh, stated that um, to some extent uh, the uh, foundation of our successes that we have started started uh, uh, a little bit on the low start so there is a kind of um, uh, forward-looking, uh, forward-looking, uh, lagging behind uh, uh, phenomenon, uh, like countries in Africa, for example, or other countries in the world market, which had a quite a poor level of development, they made a leap forward, uh, because they have... Uh, moved over straight away to mobile banking and they have managed to make the payment in mobile phones and arrange the relevant services and many uh, advanced countries have learned from them so in order to not to say it in the past tense, not to say that we used to have or we had high level of development, we can say that this capacity is still retained by the finance sector and um, for quite some time we have uh, abandoned the applied, uh, on the applied level box solutions and uh, we had uh, our own solutions developed uh, which were quite good from the point of view of architecture and um, one of the global strategic trends which we will touch upon later it's the so-called digital immune system uh, it's uh, building into the solutions of the toolkits which enable one to maintain the necessary security level so like a digital immune system and uh, by design is reacting to certain external threats and I know that many of the organizations in finance uh, technology providers and uh, other companies that specialized in safety they have already accepted that concept over a number of years and that uh, to a certain extent uh, is a uh, actually a guarantee, a warranty that uh, of future development. Of course, we have uh, faced uh, an unprecedented level of threats and various unfriendly um, impacts. Uh, so during this period, the design, the um, uh, reliability of, of our systems, the fact that they are robust enough, has enabled us to go through that period. So I'm quite, and I'm quite optimistic. My optimism is based upon the following factors, that in the finance sector, on the one hand, we have our own developments, our own solutions, our own um, solutions, both on the architecture level and uh, also and we also have quite good tasks of uh, maintaining this capability related to competences. We need to retain those capabilities. And uh, maybe I am a little uh, bit biased, but uh, yet uh, I think we have quite good collabor collaborative uh, links. Uh, and uh, as I am speaking on behalf of the Financial Technologies Association, this uh, um, horizontal interface, horizontal cross-industrial interface uh, between the financial market and the public sector, vertical uh, ties uh, between the um, consumers and uh, ma uh, producers, manufacturers, uh, vendors. So, uh, nothing is uh, ideal, but let me ask Vladimir Stremovsky, I'm also looking optimistically at the future and how do you see the prospects for the development? Did it, uh, uh, how much did it disturb us? Did those we at the national payment system have 90% uh, of the software which is developed in-house because we don't have uh, box products for uh, national uh, payment system. They also have developed the protocol for the mere cards ourselves and um, uh, the uh, fast payment system also has developed by ourselves. So in the financial sector, speaking about the banks, 
закончилось финансирование. And speaking about the technologies, of course, we are. Uh, we had more of a technology system. I'm not uh, seeing anything like that. And for the products and uh, projects that we run with our company, we didn't suspend anything, but we have actually come up with a few new ones, which uh, would have been impossible if uh, international payment system would be present on the market, um, and um, our Director General, Vladimir Komlev, has mentioned that because there is an ocean of opportunities which has opened, uh, uh, actually when the giants of, of the, the international payment system have left, uh, uh, we have come up with uh, new opportunities to do something new, because when the international payment systems were present, Visa and MasterCard, uh, we, of course, we are in a certain role of uh, the people who are looking at what the colleagues are trying to do and we haven't been always able to do something by ourselves and now were impossible with uh, the um, international payment systems. Uh, yes, they, they didn't really di did they dictate the situation in the market. We were business number three. It was mostly their business the business of uh, the two major international payment systems and now the situation has changed and of course they have dictated a lot and speaking about the national payment system and the trust the confidence to them uh, you are, it is likely that you probably are in touch with uh, your international colleagues. Do they distrust or trust uh, in you? Uh, and uh, what is the trend? Uh, there is a lot less confidence, but they still have interest to us. It's just that uh, they, I wouldn't say they are afraid, they wouldn't use that term, but people are assessing the risks uh, from continuing to be in touch with them, we can become exposed to sanctions by staying in contact, by remaining our par partners. But uh, we are still members of ACI Consul, we are uh, still members of EMV, of uh, those who are in the payment uh, cards business. We are still members of those esteemed association and what has been done by us for the Russians, of course, we have uh, probably proven everything to Russians. Uh, and uh, what our company has done, it's a unique achievement. And uh, all the people understand that what we have done over this uh, short period, people are applauding it. Dennis uh, was talking about the entry of the products to the market, so it's better to... Uh, so where is that uh, edge? Is it better to race for the result and then maybe catch up later on the stuff that's not so important, or just to go slowly and steadily? Let's look at it from a slightly different point of view. Since we were talking about the February 24 and how our system has sustained all the impacts, and actually it does stir a little bit of a uh, um, uh, ambiguous reaction. So actually we are being lulled in a little way a bit uh, uh, appeased by uh, having no major uh, adverse impacts, no major attacks, but according to my data, because we are monitoring the, the situation related to the security and I am reading the IT channel of the Ukrainian army from morning till night and there is no active phase of uh, some sort of a 
cyber war which would be waged by secret services. Uh, so uh, mostly their records are lay people, they are hackers, independent hackers. Uh, we have become a range, a test range for hackers, but they are not very deep attacks. It's not intelligence, not secret services. And uh, that can be a kind of a false uh, uh, appeasement. And um, the way in which the situation this year is different from the situation last year is that our financial sector, in fact, is the most protective one from the point of view of the security. And there are companies which have uh, uh, very well uh, coped with uh, the security situation. But why the finance are so well protected is because the hackers always had a motivation to steal money. If you want to rob the bank, you go to the bank to get the money. That's why the banks were trying to protect themselves. So they are the best tested, the best uh, protected. And the entire system is uh, built around the protection of assets. And because the hackers are motivated at uh, on stealing funds, stealing money. And now when you are reading the resources of the countries which are our adversaries, which are attacking us, now the emphasis has shifted a little bit. The uh, task is not to rob the banks, not to steal cryptocurrencies or anything like that, but uh, to do the maximum damage. Uh, and the last attacks were aimed at uh, uh, mm, doing damage, inflicting damage, and so uh, we shouldn't actually arrest uh, uh, and uh, appeased and uh, that we haven't been broken into since uh, February 24, but we should test uh, the capabilities, uh, uh, test uh, whether the payment system can be destroyed completely, whether the payments can be suspended, whether you can steal that parts of the base data which is sensitive. And I understand that in many parts uh, throughout the entire sector such testing has not been done, so really everyone is relying on uh, the work of the architects and programmers and that safety is ensured, but we should check it. We should ask our hackers, uh, have uh, such drills, have such cyber security drills been conducted by uh, from Swiss Bank? No, Dennis is saying very reasonable things and uh, we have done it uh, a little bit more easily because historically we have done it as a base bank for the Russian defense sector, defense industry. Uh, so we have actually prepared ourselves, still have some challenges facing us. And uh, the challenges uh, that we are being faced by the banks in spite of the, uh, a lot of the self-made technology that we have. Uh, and uh, so we still have this task of input replacement of various applied software which have either become physically unavailable or which in principle uh, can uh, pose a threat on the program and system level. Therefore, I think from the point of view of the further development, uh, because the national uh, secure payment system has its uh, kind of a startup and they have been uh, addressing certain things by themselves. If there were analogs, they would be using them by themselves, but most of the banks actually have been in existence for already for some years. And uh, yesterday I read that uh, VTB and Akritia uh, have are now using by 70%, they converted by 70% to a local software. And so it's sometimes one or two or three or 10% of the things, how critical it is. And of course, uh, the cyber uh, drills, uh, it's also one of the things that need to be run. Some things need to will need to be done during the nearest time uh, and uh, of course there are always risks and we should actually do something uh, in that respect. 
So we have uh, have slightly appeased ourselves, so why is the finance sector has become more uh, protected? Uh, So now I think we should, uh, in a way, of course, the first story about the cyber drills is very interesting. Another thing that we are actually seeing in reality, if we're looking at the incidents that are taking place in the financial sector, a part of them actually uh, are never, never come to the surface. Uh, the professionals are seeing them, but it's not distributed, not disseminated, and it is very important uh, in parallel to accepting the reality that exists now, we should also, in a way, pardon the different uh, potholes that exist uh, in the system. And uh, so there is a different model of the intruders, of the trespassing. So we should uh, slightly change this situation, uh, slightly rework this concept. Now, Pavel Gontarev uh, should have probably ask this question is uh, how topical is it for you what Dennis has mentioned now uh, yes uh, as we are coming back to the beginning of our discussion and talking about the financial services available to the people uh, and um, the trust in them I would in the first place I would like to say that we're talking about certain things we as the consumers uh, We don't have a choice. In Africa, they have converted to mobile payments because there is uh, no retail banking network and uh, many services would have been unavailable uh, and, uh, to the people. And uh, that is also a feature of our markets, which means that we don't have a choice whether to trust or not to trust. Uh, uh, if we obtain it digitally or remotely, either we obtain it digitally or remotely, we don't have that uh, option at all. And, uh, uh, the uh, security, coming back to the next uh, issue, it's not the only trust factor. And uh, uh, the, our colleagues from the National uh, Secure Payments Company, NSPK, uh, they say that they have uh, addressed that themselves and they have, they have developed their software. But uh, to me, it doesn't sound very... Uh, I'm not very confident about that, because if you have uh, developed that software from scratch, uh, there is a different... Uh, uh, risk, set of risks. Uh, so uh, the technology itself may be uh, not available to outsiders, but uh, the way you deploy it, uh, there may be a lot of bugs and um, many things that um, cause uh, cause some problems. Many of our solutions are solutions by our vendors, our internal solutions. Uh, and backups, uh, they are quite uh, young, quite nuanced, uh, and that uh, yields um, certain uh, new threats and new distrust on the part of the consumers because of there, are, there is not enough functionality, not enough uh, speed, not enough uh, services when we are talking about servicing uh, this or that product both in the financial sector or in the IT sector and it is very important now to find uh, the correct foundation for the construction of our own program solutions, our own infrastructure, the, find the market format the way it has been determined by the sector both in finance, we of course we understand the role of the regulator and the largest banks, sectoral banks and other financial institutions, but we are issuing from the premise that the landscape is quite sustainable, at least at this moment, and uh, the payment system, the mere payment system, we are not seeing it as a global competitor to Visa or MasterCard, but as a local competitor, we uh, I see that it's a working story and of course uh, unavoidably we should uh, build up the new setup, the new landscape of the technologies.
and uh, the roles of the players are still being formulated, still being determined, and uh, the banks are making the new databases, the IT companies are making the payment systems, and uh, so on and so forth, so many people are confusing the uh, companies are mixing the different value proposals we have uh, merged uh, various uh, proposals from various sources and uh, there is a lot of uh, influence uh, coming from various ends and uh, in view of the contemporary set of circumstances uh, uh, the uh, value proposals from uh, each player will be sort of crystallized and uh, we will try to see where they see their success factors, what are their key competitive edges, competitive advantages, what they can do best in financial services, in cloud services, in finance services, and uh, information security, and then we would have to configure that uh, uh, sector and partnership therein. And uh, issuing from the proposals from the key players and how the market is perceiving those players from the outside. So you are forecasting that there will be a process of specialization underway on one or a group of similar products. Yes, yes, I definitely believe in that. Evgeny Kolbin, do you agree? Uh, when it comes to the trust and the cloud technologies, when you are moving over, when you are investing everything into it, into that, yes, there are a few reasons for that. And one of that is the IT specialists simply have those phrases, this never touch working system. Uh, and many people are concerned about that a little bit cautious um, there are cybersecurity specialists uh, with all uh, major corporations who are resisting that but on the whole I think that uh, we should be approaching it rather not as a, some kind of a tweak uh, but uh, we should uh, try it as a kind of a survival method, as a method of uh, earning new money or saving money. And uh, I, most frequently we are actually accessing financing experts and CEOs who are mostly interested in in uh, FinRes uh, and uh, in uh, business and that's a new look at this whole uh, uh, domain and uh, when it comes to cyber security and the like I think that in general I'm looking at that uh, from a slightly different side I think the cyber security uh, some while ago some time ago it was more like a physical security. It was uh, uh, actually a man in suits were employed there, but the world has changed the outlook of this whole sector very much. And uh, over a third of the people who are working in cyber security are now good-looking girls who like it very much. And uh, I think that uh, it's becoming more and more advanced and there is demand for new technologies. Uh, and it will be a big driver. Uh, so the people actually who are participating, who are doing something in this field on their quality, on who they are, on what their interests are, interests are much will depend. Uh, so Dennis, uh, in your opinion, have our companies arrived at the understanding that security is also important or do they also uh, feel that uh, they need to actually be concerned with it? Actually, the fact that your product has survived the cyber war will be a very classy advantage uh, in the international market because uh, Arabian countries have a demand for sovereignty, including and for technology sovereignty, among other things.
uh, the countries which are not prepared to work with Russia, or are non, which are non-friendly, and uh, many have uh, actually never survived such storm of uh, attacks. Uh, uh, and uh, in Russia, the uh, uh, it's becoming more damage resistant. The software is becoming more damage resistant. It's very fast. It's like air defense systems. So the air defense may either hit a rocket or not. And uh, the same thing relates to the software. So you may be saying anything, but we are now proving that uh, the software may be working. Uh, in all conditions, and there is a lot of Russian software. So once we are out of this situation, we will be this new protection level, which will be a new advertising tweak. Um, uh, advertising uh, kind of a cutting edge and uh, so when we get out of it uh, are we going to become more sovereign in terms of uh, as a country in terms of financial attack or not after this crisis it's a difficult question difficult question i think it's uh, now we are doing what needs to be done necessary steps in that direction but as it has been rightfully mentioned speaking about technologies and financial sector as the uh, national uh, 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 NSPK company, uh, uh, they are sovereign, uh, and if we can do it, and if it has been proven in the framework of a single uh, entity, then we can uh, actually be moving uh, and we can achieve a certain technology sovereignty. Of course, I'm trying to become, to be responsible for that. Of course, it's more, it's achievable and it's not easy, but it's achievable. So, speaking about uh, being uh, complacent, uh, it's actually an interesting discussion and an Eastern, uh, interesting set of rhetoric that uh, uh, an NSPK, uh, an National uh, Secure Payment uh, Company, uh, 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 is it good or bad? I didn't quite understand the previous speaker. We actually, over the eight years of our company, we have proved that our products Actually, everything can be hacked, everything can be broken, if it's man-made. And, uh, of course, the colleagues uh, and Dennis, who is in charge of that, but, but then you can ask why you have made the mirror card, why you have uh, started, because in Armenia I have paid only with the mirror. Actually, we have proven it to everyone, and uh, this type of sovereignty, at least in terms of payment, it really does exist, and when it comes to technologies, one of the issues about which I wanted to elaborate, uh, deliberate uh, about uh, safety uh, technologies. There is not a very large audience and we are not going to the uh, tech level as such as DLC systems or discuss anything in such kind of a uh, detail. But as a monopolist in the market, we pay tremendous attention to security, like Dennis has mentioned, February 24th and everything that was after that. And, uh, I didn't want to uh, touch upon that, but we have been attacked as a, our company, NSPK, and colleagues from Central Bank have quoted some figures, but we had even more 
different adverse uh, impacts so that there was an attack attacks attacks in March uh, and then the never ending attacks uh, in March but we kept you are you keep using the card which means that it's, everything is fine and uh, so which means that people have learned to do everything safe and uh, make everything safe in the previous session in this room, Mr. Ivazov, uh, Alexander Ivazov has mentioned uh, the client experience and he has introduced it as a certain uh, layered pie and um, if you take one of the layers and describe it um, individually, like IDs, for example, handling your IDs, so security in general, it's a huge layered pie, it's not even a pie, but uh, actually even maybe two pies and uh, everything starts with the infrastructure and ends with applications and if you go even uh, upper uh, higher above it's international standards including international security standards and we have a whole division which is dealing with the certification starting from the cards and uh, post terminals so any kind of form factors whether rings or keychains or anything like that or chips we actually do certify that in order to prevent uh, anything that doesn't comply with the standards from getting into the market so we have chips that not going to burn like sometimes it happened in the in the metro the metro the chips by very steamed bank were actually burning uh, at the metro term on the metro terminals so so I will tell it about tell you about it later so it's actually a specific batch of the chips that had problems so we actually do control it so it's really a layered pie and uh, uh, once again uh, saying that uh, promptly quickly doesn't mean uh, poor quality uh, I would say prove it uh, so now VK I am happy about this opportunity to slightly revive our discussion and uh, under no circumstance uh, would I like to revive this discussion this is not what I wanted to mention I'm actually uh, confident uh, but uh, in our social networks uh, and uh, from the point of view of the market situation it's a slightly similar story to the effect that we have global players who are, are globally pushing forward they are globally strong meaning Facebook or others uh, other players and yet uh, the Russian companies, at the least in the local market and the Russian language segment, uh, they are competing with them quite uh, successfully in that segment or in that competition level which they can afford for themselves. And that has been so historically. And to some extent, when uh, the uh, Russian players, now that uh, the international players have left the Russian market, we have sensed that something to which we have uh, become used is leaving the market. And to that extent, it's a very similar story. And I'm happy that you have mentioned the clientele experience as a multi-factor entity which consists of many aspects. And uh, security is one of those aspects uh, jointly with the service level functionality, promotion and many other the factors and uh, uh, now that I mentioned uh, that something that has been made relatively promptly and with our own efforts is on the one hand the control factor because if you have done something by yourself you understand how it works from a single screw to the end result and uh, in that uh, uh, respect you are gaining independence besides you don't have a broad application of a technology you have assembled it, uh, put it together only in one button, you trust the engineers that have put it together. So it's good if you have survived the large impact, significant impact, significant uh, verification factor, how it has happened without, uh, with our, for example, information security. Uh, companies but for the technology it's actually useful for the further development of the technology so 
As we are coming back to the first thesis, I think that an SPK like us, let's uh, trust in that. And in two segments of the market, there are two local leaders, uh, VK in the social networks and MIR in the payment systems. And uh, we are going uh, to be competing at a certain point on the global market with our former partners, VK will be competing with the TikTok, Facebook, Instagram and others in their respective niche which are prohibited in Russia, I should make a note, so that uh, nobody, but they are allowed probably in the Central Asia or in Armenia. Uh, yes, I haven't been using VPN. Yes, uh, you were paying with Mercat and you have, could have ended Instagram or VK, Vkontakte, depending on your preferences, of course, if we use Vkontakte, your preferences are the most important for us, like an SPK, and uh, for us, uh, the preferences of the Russian segment of the network are important, both of the Russian, and uh, we are actually nurturing uh, the dream that we will be expanding our market, we will be seeking the new audiences also outside the company. The same thing will be happening with the payment systems uh, and it's already happening with the mirror system and uh, the success in that competition it's also it's a safety factor, it is a, a service and a factor which uh, we will be able to provide and the quality of this client path and client service and of course uh, we will not be able to avoid the competition with the global players and uh, the um, uh, doing something by all your own efforts it doesn't mean that you do something in the same protective manner uh, as the technology uh, which has been tested on dozens of similar cases or uh, tested under 100 attacks. I think for me it is a factor of uh, having lesser experience and therefore lesser confidence at the moment. Uh, 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 yes, to a large extent, uh, and the keys, when it comes to the key software, on the other hand, with the partners, when it comes uh, to the areas of specialization, where people have more expertise, when they're talking about firewalls, the anti-DDoS attack uh, systems, anti-viruses, uh, so uh, it's not done by one's own efforts and we probably won't be able to assume the role of the manufacturer and, uh, uh, and uh, so now that we are drawing the conclusions, there are no claims to an SPK, uh, so uh, it turned out that uh, from the point of international point of view we would have everything very well but uh, now uh, before secondary sanctions have hit us by the US uh, 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 introduced by the US uh, so what how should uh, the uh, cyber range uh, cyber testing ground of the future what should it look like I think it's similar to the one of the present and the colleagues from the VK they were one of the first to register in our stand of platform and as the guys have formulated it we actually want all the Russian hackers to find look for uh, vulnerabilities in our systems and they are getting paid for that and everything works in a classy manner so I think from the point of view of the future we have made a small step forward uh, and uh, we are going to launch shortly in about two weeks uh, a program called Back Bounty which is oriented not only at the technical vulnerabilities but at one of the key risks for our companies uh, which is at the moment stealing the monetary funds and we're going to be paying uh, from 10 million million to those who will be able to make at least one transaction uh, by reaching our financial system uh, and hacking our company so is, some, is it something that has been announced before yes we have uh, we have announced it yesterday but actually launching this program is something that will be done in a couple of weeks uh, so in the future uh, 
Uh, the companies which are under the running the risk of cyber attacks will have to be in the same way oriented at the launch of backbound programs uh, aiming at uh, the possibility of really major adverse events. So we should actually apply, uh, call upon the broader hacker community of Russia. Am I right once again? in understanding that positive is opening itself for hacker community and that they will be paying actually for hacking attempts. Yes, not for minor technical shortcomings, but actually regardless of the method, as long as it is an IT method, by a remote hacker attack, because I think that only by this method, but not by building up the internal process, we will we'll be uh, able to practically make sure sure that uh, this risk is not uh, going to be implemented, uh, is not going to actually become reality in the future. Actually, we are already are paying money already to a few companies which are trying to break us. So for us, it is um, one of the I don't know about the colleagues, but for us, uh, the number of the cyber security staff is uh, about 10% of our total payroll. So there are different uh, people, they are engineers and architects and uh, software and hardware architects. So we are actually approaching it very seriously. And what uh, Dennis is talking about, actually, it's not something new, it's not something that has appeared yesterday, uh, because uh, in the past I worked with a foreign bank, it was 15 years ago, and it was a, a Ra Russian Ra subsidiary of a uh, foreign bank, it had a contract with an uh, an American company which has been continuously trying to break into it. So it's not something that have uh, come around yesterday, it's, it's really a super novelty. It's something that uh, has been around for quite some time because uh, many people have not paid attention because uh, people thought nobody needs them, no one wants to break into them. But of course banks, of course banks, you can steal money from the banks, but who would be breaking into just a website uh, for some kind of extortion, viruses of some sort, uh, people have blocked something, but there is really minor things and now I agree that there is a new trend to just uh, destroy a business, to format the hard disks format the service even without stealing something. Now the trend is that there can be um, different customers and what you are being paid for it's a different thing. You are not stealing something but you can get paid actually over 10 or 100 million dollars for uh, uh, destroying mine or Ross Telecom or Pavel's infrastructure or a, or a, or a nuclear power plant uh, uh, to get it out of order for uh, uh, shut it down for several days and uh, that's actually what you are doing Dennis I think is very cool and uh, there will be a tremendous demand for that and for many not just uh, leaders сейчас, in cybersecurity, but for many CEOs, it will finally become clear that it is an important thing and that uh, there is, should be no tolerance, zero tolerance to not observing the cybersecurity measures in relation to employees, processes, uh, software, hardware, cannot just cannot be permitted this tolerance should be aspiring to zero approaching zero 
So uh, when uh, there is a um, community which is hacking you or uh, not a single company, yes, I would like to emphasize two things. Is any one of you ready to actually pay a large amount of money and declare to the community that they can destroy your company and go hacking your company, go hack with it and uh, uh, just go deep into the infrastructure, see how the hard disks are encrypted and if you show that, then we will be able to pay you a million dollars. So that's a kind of a novelty that... Uh, so let's now listen to the answers, whether you can actually bet on that. If this is going to be paid in the event, uh, external hackers will do it. Yes, you know that we are doing it, we are doing it now, and uh, I would probably agree that that uh, uh, in terms of back bounty and uh, we actually uh, participated in that before and we believe that uh, there are threats of different nature and there are professional companies that are performing the tests uh, and uh, to this or that extent uh, they are seeking vulnerabilities and we are also working with the community and we are working with the cyber security and code description and all of that for us is two sides of the same metal on the one hand we are checking together with the community the vulnerabilities and on the other hand we are creating the technologies and the software including based on the open source practices and uh, for us uh, it uh, will be both are parts of our DNA uh, so uh, Maxim in the first place uh, I'm not prepared because we don't have critical infrastructure, we have pilot sandbox, uh, and it's easy to create it in you and it's expensive, uh, 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 dangerous, and we don't need it, and also we should make companies with critical infrastructure and uh, once again I like this kind of an immune system technology it's something that trains it and the normal immune system if we live in sterile conditions what Dennis also mentioned we should be training it and also I have, uh, have uh, uh, invented a term come up with a coin the term crowd, ki crowd killing you can take it. Uh, you can use it. <laughs> As an element of a critical infrastructure, we are systemically doing this work, including our colleagues from the positive. But whether someone from the outside can be let inside, I am uh, uh, more working on the side of the business then on the side of the people who are in charge of the cyber security they can say that this work is already being conducted now how it is working publicly and who is breaking into our uh, uh, systems uh, having in mind this is specific to our bank we have our own defense line i think in principle for the banking sector anyone can be breaking but what the clients will answer is another question in reply to this uh, marketing idea from the positive side uh, of course uh, money and banks like it to be quiet uh, and uh, many incidents that uh, even theoretical risk of that those incidents can actually uh, disrupt uh, um, uh, the uh, system and uh, so we are talking about uh, about uh, letting something in the industrial environment they are going through several echelons of protection and uh, Evgeny you have already answered uh, and uh, we are now already uh, participating and paying for back bounty not in the form of such a well organized process uh, but uh, uh, we are trying to make it uh, 
процессе? Through the companies that are organizing it for us, but not through a broader community. Yes, I don't need a million dollars. I don't know how to make use of it. It will be some bribe or something. I don't know. Uh, we also are, uh, we have our own team, our own hired people. This uh, work uh, has been uh, organized about five years ago, and uh, uh, without that I don't know how we would achieve sustainability, impact sustainability. We are developing new services, and those services are going through uh, layered protection, starting from code reviews. There are people who are analyzing the codes for security etc etc et uh, so it's a huge pie and uh, it's uh, uh, penetration test is one of the methods which are being used. I would add one more story. We are talking now about the internal threats. But there is also a huge layer of uh, internal uh, abuses. Employees. And uh, that also is another, yet another uh, area. And we should also make sure that one person would not be in a position to kill your entire business. But yeah, that would be a topic for yet another round table, and that's all connected with the same things, connected with the process, uh, and uh, how cybersecurity is organized from within, and that's also a very important uh, aspect of the same story. And uh, so generally most people are for it, but some people it's somewhere it's not necessary. And in some places it uh, should be uh, done very quietly. And uh, by the end we also wanted to make another survey and people in the audience in the room already voted. What is the most important thing? The question was to strengthen the confidence in the new technologies. And the results are as follows. Can you please show us the results for the second survey? And the overwhelming majority has mentioned that has was the opinion chosen that it should be three people took part according to the statistics. 66.67% uh, uh, looks a lot more impressive. But of course, it's, yes, it's your internal hacker who has uh, actually damaged you from within. Okay, 66.67. Public independent uh, confirmation of the cybersecurity and more input in the promotion. And uh, we should uh, uh, use this one hour uh, that it's uh, public independent confirmation of safety. <laughs> and Dennis, a uh, question to you. Can you make a conclusion what you have heard and with what uh, ideas are you going to leave this room? With what impressions? I have, what I have gathered is that uh, this is the most much, one of the most mature and advanced sectors uh, cybersecurity in our country and we are comparing all our fintech with what you get in uh, uh, Central Europe, uh, they still have a lot to catch up with us, a lot of room for improvement. And, um, uh, for the entire sector, is for fin financial technologies, it's not a new topic, it's very good. It actually makes us very optimistic and uh, uh, this uh, word optimism has sounded several times and uh, let us uh, use the opportunities of uh, uh, social networks like the Facebook and Instagram and uh, 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 Visa and MasterCard leaving Russia and Positive has been on the sanctions for some time, but they have uh, 
actually they're actually developing they have access to the exchange with uh, their shares so uh, let's uh, wish uh, everyone good luck in their undertakings thank you молодцы всем хорошего дня спасибо гостям спасибо нашим спикерам и удачи вам в ваших делах